Hi Alice here, and today I have Brainwave's Alara planar magnetic headphones. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, that's what happened when Brainwaves asked me if I'd like to review some products of theirs, and I thought, hmm, your IEMs aren't quite the kind of thing I review. I usually review things that are a little bit more expensive in my upper market than that. And they said, oh, we have some $500 planar magnetic headphones. And I was like, what? Since when do you make planar he magnetic headphones? So they sent them over, and they are quite attractive. And so they're a mixture of metal and plastic, you can see in the design. We have these beautiful metal cups, beautifully carved here. They're an open back design, obviously, which usually works best with planar magnetic headphones. And they have these plastic yokes here and a metal attachment, a metal hinge. But that's the only kind of thing that you, you can't tell which is which. But my only concern, of course, with the design is that the, the uh, plastic yoke can potentially break. I treat my headphones gently, but I have seen the occasional person complain about their headphones breaking, so it's something to note. Uh, Design-wise, otherwise, they use Brainwave's ear pads. Of, uh, I don't know if they're the same on other headphones, but they pop out really readily. Their design uses uh, what I call, uh, against the skin, you have that what I call dust magnet cloth, which is not my favorite, and I suggested actually they try something much like Hi-Fi Man does with a slightly better material. But all the same, you know, they're pretty comfortable as things go. The depth of the ear pads you can see, it's about, you know, not quite a notch on my finger. So again, like most headphones, they're very average size, and if you have super big ears, you're probably not going to find them that comfortable. But otherwise, you know, they don't clamp too hard. If anything, they clamp a little bit softly, because you can see them sliding down a little bit. So I tend to have to do them a little bit tighter than usual. The interesting thing is the hinges are a little bit stiff, so I can actually tilt, tilt them forward, they tilt forward and back, and they tend to stay there, at least on my very, very average sized head. So I can tilt the drivers very slightly forward. Actually, I think what they could have done is they could have made these completely symmetrical instead of having left and right, and then just do like Meze did, where you have left and right plugs which indicate which is which. Now, the, of that, they use a standard 3.5 millimeter connector for the headphone cable. It's the same as Hi-Fi Man and Focal and everyone else tip and sleeve, so you can use any headphone from anything, and because it's a flush socket, there's no trouble if the, the plug is too big, which is a problem I had when I wanted to plug my Sony cable into a pair of Focal LX and it wouldn't fit. So, no problem there. The cable itself is about two meters long, it's covered in that kind of shoelace material, which is probably the most pleasant in general, and terminates in a 6.5 millimeter socket, with a screw, which is actually screw-on, it's really a 3.5 millimeter inside, so that's that there. And sound-wise, well, that's where things get fairly conventional. It's not a, they're a little bit warm of what I would describe as generally neutral. So they have a fairly even sound. Um, the driver size you, you may or may not have seen is somewhere around the Fostex driver size. And I tried them with my usual number 82 playlist, which you'll see in the description, uh, which has three different kinds of bass in it from very low bass up to mid bass. And it was fairly, they're fairly punchy in all ranges and they could bring out the low bass when necessary. Nothing was particularly emphasized, so you, you know the low bass was about the same strength as the mid and upper bass and then the mids and the treble, well, you know, it was fairly pretty pretty good and pretty listenable. Not of course as clean a treble as the higher end headphones I have, but all the same, nothing particularly harsh, at least for my ears. So all in that, I found them with I, I won't go into the specific music details, I just whatever I listened to sounded well pretty good. So in general listening. They were not the most detailed headphones. I have more expensive stuff. Uh, you know, not the most dynamic. Again, other stuff does, but dynamics better. But they were a pretty good all-round listener, and it's probably it's the best way I can describe them. I think the thing is, being that they're $500, that's where you started getting into where normal consumers consider that serious headphone territory. And the other pair of headphones which I have around, which sell for around that kind of mark, are Hi-Fi Man's Sundaras. Now the Sundaras are a kind of, they're all mostly all metal with, only, with actually much less plastic than before. The only thing I don't like is this slightly cheap looking plastic on there, which I wish they used something slightly nicer looking. In that, you know, there's more metal here. They're very industrial looking, as you probably saw on the video. And the thing is, they, I reckon they sound a little clearer than the Alaras. The Alaras are kind of warm and a little bit more soft in that in the kind of sound, whereas the Sundaras are a little bit clearer, but kind of a little bit thinner sounding. I and mean, that's probably from the clarity, if anything. In terms of both of them, you know, if you found the Sundaras maybe a touch too thin, which yeah, you might in comparison, you might like the uh, Alaras more, which are a touch warmer and, and nicer in that regard. But if you like more detail, I think the Sundaras have slightly more detail. I would have liked to have seen the Alaras at a bit cheaper to fit in best because it's going to be a hard challenge against these Hi-Fi Mans, especially if Hi-Fi Man starts discounting in the future, it's going to leave the uh, Laras out kind of in the middle of nowhere. 
So as, as an entry, it's certainly good, comfortable, and a straightforward pair of headphones. And if you said there was something like, you know, three, four hundred dollars in, I'd probably say yes. That's pretty much the Alaras. There's nothing much more to say about it than them. So I hope that this I've covered enough in, without going into music details. But if you do have any questions, comments, or criticisms, please do them. Leave them in the comments section below. Once again, of course, thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. These people, for the equivalent of buying me a coffee once in a while, or actually some people pay a little bit more, want to pay the, buy me the equivalent of a dinner once in a while, they get to support making these videos, and they have already seen this video, they've already uh, seen it without ads. So if you'd, that kind of interests you, or you'd like to get my advice, you can contact me directly if you're one of my patrons. I also have a little community going, you can participate in that too. And there's some other stuff in there, like giveaways and other things you can participate in. Then do consider going to check out the links in the description and consider supporting me. Also, don't forget that I do have a website with written versions of the reviews, and there's also Bruco on there, has a number of, of great reviews you should check out, where he actually did a whole written review of these, which you can get his take as well as mine. So thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you online.